Hi. <laughs> oh, hello. Are we here? Are that's, we doing it? Yeah, that's that, That's the intro. That's it. That's all you get. Apologies, because it's so cold in here that I can actually see my own breath. <laughs> can you? Um, but such... <laughs> I can, and it's quite distracting. But such is the cost of living crisis. Yeah, um, I uh, I'm not putting my heating on for no man. So, no, I'm quite a, right. I'm a bit wonky. Sorry. Well, let's let's get things heated up in the metaphorical Ooh. sense, and then hopefully it goes into the physical. So it's Ooh, yes. it's very good to have you on. You've been on the list for a while. Uh, you were a fantastic good. podcast host. You were excellent on stage at MCM earlier this year. So it's fantastic to get to talk to you on the show properly. Thank you. That's That means a lot. And I have been on many lists for a while. So, <laughs> Well, we can strike you off this <laughs> on one. Dodge, no dodgy through. ones, I should clarify. Yeah, Nothing you did dodgy. make it. Yeah, fair. Yeah. Good. I made that sound weird, didn't I? <laughs> What a way Sorry, to start. Sorry, I'm off. very t- I'm very tired, but I'm very <laughs> excited. Good. Well, let's crack on with the first question then. So, um who knew a fantastic fantastic Doctor Who podcast. Very simple first question is when and why did you start it up? Um That's a very good question. I ask myself that very often, <laughs> usually mid complicated edit. Um why did I start this? Um, basically, I, I sort of, I, I've always been a Doctor Who fan, but I, I'd never really been involved in the fandom as such, um, like I, in terms of like online. Uh, and then lockdown happened, and I decided to um, watch all of Classic Who from the start. Um, so then that led to me tweeting about it a bit, and then a few people started tweeting me back and then very gradually I fell into the Doctor Who Twitter rabbit hole uh, and which spiralled into um, like just making Doctor Who threads and stuff and joining the watch alongs in lockdown which were great fun and then like a little later on in the year I'd, I'd wanted to do something like this like a YouTube channel or some kind of podcast for years with multiple failed attempts and um, mainly because it failed because I wasn't doing it about the thing that I cared about the most, which was Doctor Who. So what were Um, they before? And I just thought, uh, well, um, one was music. I used to, surprisingly, I used to be a musician. Ah. um, Well, I I wanted to be a musician when I was a teenager. Um, So it was like me singing with a guitar uh, was one YouTube channel. Is that still Uh, available to view? I'm going to say no, and then oh, by well. the time this goes up, they'll all have been <laughs> raised from the internet. I'll talk but to they you are there. Lot. They are somewhere. Um, and also, they're very ropey. I was like 14 at the time, so it's, Even yeah, better. it's not the best singing voice. Um, and then I also started a film YouTube channel called Roughly Cut, which lasted for three videos, and then I gave <laughs> up. Um But uh, yeah, there's been a few little attempts, but then in lockdown, well, it was after lockdown, really. It was like, no, it was like October, September, October time, 2020. I was just messing around with the idea. I had the idea for the Corridor of Fame first, and I wanted to make that like a website, like, and sort of like a, or like a blog or something. And I didn't, I was like, but then when the idea of the podcast came along, I was like, that could be a feature. And then I could do the same thing with episodes and have it be like Mm. a DVD collection. So those ideas came first. And then I came up with a name and then I made the logo and then I was in, I was like, Oh, I have to make this now. As soon as I made the logo, I was like, I am, I'm in. And Jess made me a mug. Jess ordered me a mug with the logo on, um, which is next to me, but I can't reach it. Um, but <laughs> she made me a mug with the with the logo on, and basically said, "You've got a mug with the logo on now, so you have to do this." Did he? Uh, that, did she then, then continue thought, to say, so "You I, I have to do it now, you bloody mug"? Yeah, very nice, very nicely played. Um, but yeah, it was it was basically. It wasn't really with the intention of a anything coming of it or it actually going anywhere or it lasting incredibly long. It was sort of just a vehicle for me to chat to people 
like you, uh, like other people in the fandom and maybe some people who've been involved in the show in some loose way. Um, it was basically just a vehicle for that. For yeah, me to see, that was someone to chat yeah. to about Doctor Who because I that was another question I had because um, obviously you've had some amazing guests on, which I will talk about uh, later on. Mm-hmm. But was the idea to get those people on, like for example, Sophie Aldred, was that ever in the initial plan, or was it like that would be nice? No, no, no. It was. I wrote a letter. Uh, another thing was like. When I decided to make it based, because I wanted it to sort of be a, in the same way that the community show is, sort of a celebration of the people of Doctor Who mm. and how creative they can be. Um, and I was like, well, let's see if there's enough guests to mm-hmm. get that off the ground. Right. So I started writing a list. And within about three or four days, I completed a list, which I still have on my phone, which has over 350 people on it. Oh wow! Of where I thought they could they could be a fun guest, mm. and I was like, oh wow! But I I ranked it in terms of like definitely would come on someone that I know, someone that I I speak to and would definitely be up for it. Uh, sort of maybe, and then never go. It was it was titled Never Gonna Happen. Ha! Even um, then, you were like trying to figure yeah, out, yeah. Curb in your own and, enthusiasm. Yeah, and the two top of that list were Katie Manning and Rob Sherman. <laughs> so, and wouldn't you which know was it. low? Which so yeah, and I mean, I, I I'd had both of them on by episode thirteen. So wow, wow, was, was it that soon? I knew so it, it was soon, but my it was word. that soon. Katie Manning was episode ten, and then Rob Sherman was was episode thirteen. And I had a lot of in- other incredible people that that I never would have thought would have said yes. Oh, um, and we will definitely be getting onto them. Spiraled very oh. quickly. No, oh, yeah. absolutely. It spiraled very quickly, definitely. Yeah. Staying on a similar topic with sort of the origins of the whole thing, you mentioned your other podcast as well, uh, one named Roughly Cut, which is a fantastic name for a film um, podcast. Thank you. As is, Cheers. who knew for this? So where yes. did the name come from? I don't really remember. I wrote a few names. Um, there was a few names. I wonder if they're still on my phone because I, I could maybe get an exclusive. Let's delve I into the one, archives. I wrote. I wrote like a little short list, and I, I think I just went for who knew because it was snappy, mm. and I said it to Jess, and she went, "Ooh, I like that. That's good." There wasn't really a, a thought process behind it. I wanted it to be. I wanted who to be in the name. Yeah. And I thought that would be fun. I know one of them was knowing me, knowing who, <laughs> which which was very, very close. That's it was very, very close to being the name of the podcast. I'm not going to lie. To you. Like, I made a logo for knowing me, knowing who, because <laughs> which would, I mean, in a way, it, it does it, work. It works almost better as a name than who knew does. But who knew? It's also shorter. who knew shorter. It's snappier, and the logo looked better. Um, I wonder if I wonder if it's on here. Sorry, I know this is no, no. I can viewing, I can cut this down. But, <laughs> um, oh no, I don't. I don't have any. No. We'll just make some up now. Oh, oh no, no, no. That's that's potential names for a different thing. Um, yeah, no, I don't have it. But knowing me, knowing who, that was a fantastic uh, one. Um, like who's uh, probably something like whose line is it anyway? But with a who, like that, <laughs> that's literally the name of the other thing. Um, there was a lot of question ones, um, mm. just ones that, that like who knew. But yeah, I, I don't know why I settled on who knew. I think it was the logo that made it. It is a um, fantastic logo, no doubt. Thank you, thank you. I was going for um, eighties chat show vibes. Mm. No, it totally um, fits. And I like how we yeah. both have squared logos. Like we I didn't do. make mine, but it's I like how it ended up that way. Because they yeah. it just works for a Doctor There's Who a little, logo as well. Yeah, there was a lot of little Easter like the, it's gone through a lot of iterations, that logo. It went mm. but but I did I did arrive on it quite quick. But yeah, I've 
I, I think I'm, I'm quite proud of the logo because it's very easy to change as well. I've done a couple of variations on it, like for Flux and for Power Ooh, of the Doctor. Yeah, the I Flux did, like, orangey is... versions. Mm. Mm, thank you, thank you very much. Um, and having the little the little time vortex in the background in the diamond means that you can switch up a bit, which is quite fantastic. Nice. Now, pivoting away from the podcast briefly, I want to talk about mm. our shared experience because we are both we we both have a very specific thing in common here which is that we've both hosted a doctor who panel at mcm we somehow. have <laughs> well, uh, not a clue exactly not a clue well, i mean you've got one on me you've got i you've do one i have one I up have. on you just but actually no because i've technically d- I've, i mean i've been a panelist but that was with you oh that's true was, i mean very nice for having me on so i've been on on the stage three times that's true okay so um, we're technically even technically yeah technically All right, but you've yeah. had three times as, as host so you you take that well that's yes it is i, I love math okay. <laughs> um <laughs> but um i want to know because i'm sure other people they they look at you or me up on the stage and they just go how so let's answer that now how on earth did you get up on that stage for the hosting gig um in terms of physically get up there, I have no <laughs> idea because I wanted to throw up at every moment <laughs> beforehand. Yeah, and um, I get I get questions like this a lot, mm. and it's I hate I don't I really it's not that I hate the question I hate mm. the answer that I that I give because mm. people always ask me it with who knew as well, which is like how what's your secret for getting guests. And like, what's your secret for convincing all of these people to come on? I'm like, I'm not, I'm not the master. Like, I don't hypnotize people. Are you sure? I just ask. I'm sure. I'm <laughs> sure, Jack. I'm sure. Okay. Yes, I am also <laughs> sure. But everyone's like, what's why? Why? How do you get so many guests? I don't fucking know. Sorry, can I swear <laughs> okay. on this? Sure, but like, yeah, okay, but I'll, I'll, I'll rephrase know. it. I'll rephrase it slightly. How? What was there like an applying process for MCM specifically? For me, yeah, I, I had, I, I assume, did you go through like the panel application thing? I did, yeah, because I did that mm. and was unsuccessful. So congratulations. But I, uh, so my app, my panel application didn't really work because also it's it's hard with with who knew because I've had so many creative people on already and I need someone, I, I, I want to like pin it down to one guest that I've not had on already that I can get a 50 minute panel out of. Right. And they also have to be free to do Comic-Con. So yeah. basically what Tell I, me about what it. I, yeah. So, <laughs> so what I did, it's, it's, it's difficult. It's a complicated thing to arrange. So what I did instead, I was like, I, I got in touch with someone at MCM. I managed to find an email. I don't know how. Um, and I just said, uh, uh, do you know of any Doctor Who guests who are coming along um, that I could maybe approach to do? Who knew? It, it didn't really work out. But then the, the the woman who arranged it basically said, we do have this Dalek panel. This was for me. We do have this Dalek panel where the guys who build Daleks at home um, who are drive around Comic-Cons. If you've been, you'll have seen them. The, uh, the guys at Project Dalek. Dalek. Yeah, They're incredible. Bunch. They are so, so good and so cool. Um, but yeah, they basically just said, we, we're doing this panel anyway. Um, but I think they had a host who... But they, they were just looking for someone who, with a bit of Doctor Who knowledge to host it. Oh, so they um, were actively they, looking for someone as well. I don't know if they were actively looking. I think they just thought of when... It, so did the panel oh, happen before you? The, <laughs> like, panel, you... Was gonna, the panel was going to happen with me Oh, either way, it, without me. like it, 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 They've done that panel for years, um, for a, the past couple of years, yeah, with different hosts. But they just... I think basically someone just said, there's a... Doctor Who panel, there's a Doctor Who man. Let's put them together. Um, mm, fair enough. And then that's sort of how the, the the panel this last week came about as well. Yeah. Um, so dumb luck which, is your strategy. It's complete luck. I, I, yeah. I wish that I could 
tell people there's some secret kind of formula. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, like I'm, I've I've been very 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 lucky. I've just been very lucky. I just ask people, and if they say yes, then I think also what people don't see is the spectacular hit rate of no's that I get. Well, like, kind of, okay, tell you, all right. Let's pivot then. Give me a few examples of those who have outwardly said no, because I've had a few no's as well. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I want to name and shame. Oh, okay, fair enough. There's, fair enough. there's, I mean, no, it's not shame at all because I've never really had anyone who's been horrible or mean or right. even a bit arsy about it. Everyone that I've spoken to has been so lovely. Um, but there's some people there, it's just not their cup of tea. Like, they're very nice. I mean, like, one person who I just want to say because they were incredibly lovely about it. I, I have spoken to Rachel Talalay about coming on, ah. which would have been incredible. I would have loved it. Like, you put one of her episodes in, in the DVD collection. I did, yeah. And, like, she's one of the, she's probably the greatest director of New Who, mm. possibly even the greatest director that Doctor Who has ever seen. Um, but she basically just said she does, she doesn't really like doing podcasts. It's just not really her thing, and that's that's absolutely fine. Like I I don't really push it with guests. I'm not pushy. Yeah. If someone says no, I mean, if someone gives me like a maybe next year or something, mm-hmm. I'll try and make a little note and I'll me- I'll email them next year. If someone says no, flat out, I'll just I just get over it. Really, yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, so basically, if you want to host your own MCM panel, either go through the application process and get very lucky, or email whoever the hell you can find the email of and hope to God. It's it's all luck. At the end of the day, even through yeah. the application process, like I did, it's dumb luck if you'll get in. <laughs> I mean, you're, uh, this, is the, this is the thing, though. I was incredibly lucky, but you got in with a fantastic panel pitch. That's how you got in. I don't know. It was pretty rudimentary. Like the first time I applied, only two episodes of the show was actually out. So, and and That's those first mental. two episodes were rough. <laughs> oh, they weren't. They were great. Anyway, don't say that. I was in the first one. Well, okay, yeah, you weren't a guest, but yeah, I did show. I, I wasn't a guest, but you did mention the it edit the and one. me as a human were very rough. So the fact that they've chosen me is a bloody miracle. But um, keeping on the MCM theme, I'm not going to say mm-hmm. how you did it, but. You, of course, got to do a panel, even though it was short, with Peter Davison, Paul McGann, and Colin Baker, which I do believe you're hopefully getting the footage of at some point. Possibly. I have no idea at this point. I know you're on the list because I also was tagged in that email. We were both in the same email. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, so really all I want to know... Not a clue. I don't don't know. It's fine if not, because, you know, I get that these things are complicated. But if I do get the footage... I will post it wherever I can. I would to love be fair, to. They do changed it. a lot this year, and I was livid. <laughs> but, they, did, um, they changed a lot. They did, yeah. Because usually, like, I, I always get the speaker pass, right? You had press, because, oh, lucky you. Mm. But uh, I always get the speaker pass. And usually that gives you entry to all three days. But this time they changed it without telling me. So I turned up on Saturday being like, oh, yeah, I've got my speaker pass. And they say, no, you don't. You only have it for tomorrow. I'm like, Oh, oh. And Saturday was already sold <laughs> out. So I was like, oh, God. Oh. But that's a whole other kettle of fish. That's but really, shame. really, all I want to know about, about this panel in particular is just how was it? You know, how shaken were you by the whole experience? Oh, it, like it came completely out of the blue mm. as well. I shot this is an, another. Yeah, you've told me this story and I enjoy it. That I shot my shot, I sent an email. And I basically I got a no because they, they they'd already sorted all of the panels and everything, and it was all done. And I was like, oh, okay, that's fine. I wasn't expecting anything from it anyway. Mm-hmm. And then two weeks before MCM, I just got an email saying, uh, "We're doing a panel with three doctors. Uh, you're in as the host if you want it." <laughs> I was like. Okay. So I hyperventilated. I had a panic <laughs> attack and I nearly threw up at my work. Um, and then yeah. I just ran around and then I was like that for about two weeks. Understandable. Until I, think I do the same. 
until the moment I got off stage was mm -hmm. basically I was just in a constant two week long panic attack. Yeah. Um, but it was it was honestly one of the best days of my entire life. It was incredible, and like you said, it was quite a short panel. Um, just because it was the end of the day and things were yeah, yours was the very last panel quicker. going on. It was the very last panel of the day and things just it was the very last panel of the weekend. Um oh, so things true, yeah. had to wrap up a bit quicker than I would have liked. Um not that I'm I, I'm not bothered about it being yeah. it, it booked <laughs> in for about 50 minutes. I managed to do about 20 minutes. If I'm honest, I probably would have thrown up if I was on that stage for any longer. So mm. it's probably good that it was it was trimmed down a little bit. Um, it just meant that we didn't get to do as many audience questions as we'd like because um, the queues at the side of the oh, stage God, were it was so long. long. Um, uh, yeah, um, Gemma, so long. Gemma um, sort of elbowed me at one point, like, oh, you should try and get a question in. I'm like, I know how this is going. <laughs> There's no way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're never, you're never going to get to the front. <laughs> never going to get to the front. Um, but, yeah, it was just – it was absolutely incredible and – like I pinch myself every every day since I've just had a little moment where I've just maniacally laughed to myself mm -hmm. about the fact that it even happened. And like, it was really, it just felt, it was a very big moment for me as well yeah. in terms of, I like, I've, I've, um, I've always had some self-confidence issues um, and this podcast has helped a lot, but like about, 10 minutes before the Dalek panel in May, I was in the bathrooms having a full-on panic attack. Like I was I was freaking out and I was telling Jess, I am not going on that stage. I cannot do it. I I, like, I cannot move. Like I, I just couldn't physically move my body to the stage. Mm. Um and this time I was I was better, but it was a much more daunting experience because I was speaking to three people that I deem to be godlike. Yeah. Um but it was just mental. It was it was absolutely mental. I, I don't know how else to describe it really. Yeah. It, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a daydream. Mm. I don't really well as someone who was who as someone who was very fortunate to be uh, attending both of these panels. I mean the first time I was very casually sat on the floor and the other time I was very casually stood at the back. But uh, as someone who yeah. was only viewing it, I, I do have to say that you did fantastic work on both of them. I was, I'm was i incredibly proud of you for um, getting through oh. those fears. And even Thank with those you. fears, absolutely smashing out of the park. I mean, like you say, if I, if I got to be on that stage with Paul McGann, Peter Davison and Colin Baker, I'd brick it. I'd, <laughs> I'd run into yeah. the crowd just going, ah! <laughs> yeah, it changed a lot. It changed a lot in the build-up as well. Oh, so originally, did, yeah. it was two. So originally, it was two doctors. It was Paul McGann and Peter Davison, and then they went. Oh, it's three doctors because Sylvester McCoy is going to be there now. Um, and then it was four doctors because Colin Baker <laughs> was going to be there as well. So at one point, I was going to be interviewing four doctors at once. Oh my god! Um, and then unfortunately, Sylvester had to drop out the Sunday. He was still there on the Saturday, but he dropped out the Sunday. Um, so yeah, then it went back down to what it, what you, what actually happened on the day, which was, was Peter, Colin and Paul, uh, we're on first name terms now. Yeah. Yeah. Saying, your besties. Uh, you've got, I'm joking, I'm joking. You text each other I'm on the joking, weekends. Please. <laughs> That's what Jess, Jess said. That was the funniest thing about it was she was sat in the audience and yeah, just seeing right. me go. Yeah. She, she was like. She said, just watching you go, um, and Paul, what do you think of that? Like, just mm -hmm. so casually. Like, it's such a weird thing. I, like, these people are fantastic. my eyes. Well, that's how you got to do it, though. It'd be really awkward if you just stand there like, uh, Hello, Mr. Uh, McGann. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. McGann, I'm a big fan of the, of the Doctor Who. <laughs> well, um, I've got two more sort of quick questions to wrap up. Um, I was thinking of asking a very unfair question which is a favorite guest but that's cruel and i'm not going to make you do that so what i'm going to say instead is counting only the podcast so i'm not counting on stage stuff who has been a sort of standout appearance so not necessarily like you're surprised or or, or you were yeah. lucky to have them like 
from just talking to them, is there any sort mm-hmm. of standout pods you'd recommend, should we say? Yeah. Yeah, there are. Um, like I said, I don't have favourites. I thought what were you were going to say was who's your least favourite, <laughs> which I would. Uh, the only answer I could give would be you. So, I mean, it's correct. It's I'm, ge- correct I'm joking. You were, <laughs> yours, was a, yours was a great pod and you dropped the C-bomb twice. I'm a very um, sweary person. First, I hide it online. The first but... and... The first, and you don't hide it online because it was on. A, it was in a podcast. I Jay. hide it for They're the online. community show, just in case. Because <laughs> it's for the community. But for the who community. knew it was a free-for-all? Yeah. Um, I beat them both, it's fine. Um, mm-hmm. But you are the first and only guest so far to have, have dropped a C-bomb. So Damn right. And you've done it twice. So. <laughs> Damn right. Um, no, your, my episode with you is great. I love the Christmas ones. Which you've also been on a Christmas one. I was very lucky to join um, the Christmas one. Yeah, you, you were not lucky. I was. I felt lucky. Intoxicated. <laughs> I, was, I was so drunk. I go. I finished that podcast and I went downstairs. And Jess was like, "What the hell have you been doing?" Oh my she was god! Like, you stink. Of <laughs> I was. Like, That's why everyone needs another half like that. Just, yeah, to, just so that you can I, be um, told. Yeah. I'd, it it was a tough time, and, but it was a very very fun podcast to record. Um, the Christmas ones are always fun, and like the little round tables that I do for episode reviews. But in terms of like a main episode of the podcast that I'd recommend, um, Rob Shearman is my always my go to answer for something like this because he's an absolute joy, um, and we. Yeah, we we went very in depth about a lot of things. We went in depth about the Target novel for Dalek, um, and talking about Big Finish and talking about Dalek itself and what it's like to be a writer and also anxiety and dealing with anxiety as a writer or someone and how how Doctor Who helps with anxiety. It's one of my favourite chats I've ever had. I I am um, I had a little cry at the end of that podcast. I'm not gonna lie because I was like that. That was just. I, I you thought were that, that was a, with it. That was an incredible episode. Um, for funny, um, I think my episode with Matthew Jacobs, who wrote yeah. the TV movie, yeah. and Vanessa Yule, is a really funny podcast. Matthew Jacobs, especially, is one of the funniest people I've ever ever interviewed. Mm-hmm. He's hilarious. Um, what other ones? What what? <laughs> I'm going to put you on the spot now. What ones do you like? Well, I always tend to gravitate to the Sophie Aldred one just because, well, A, that was the first one I, yeah, I li- yeah. personally listened to. And you're always attached to the first of anything. But it was mm. also just fascinating to listen to. Also, I do like how now, as we're recording this, it's just after both Rassilon Productions and An Awful Lot of Running podcast both announced her as a guest at nearly the yeah. exact same time. But you're the trailblazer. You can say you I, got there first. But also... She knew about Power of the Doctor at that point. I am 99% sure she knew. Yeah, it was it was May, it was no, it was July 2021. She knew. Oh hundred <laughs> percent. And I am so oh, I just wish I'd have teased something out of her. Oh, imagine that. Imagine, imagine just one slip up. That's all you need. Imagine just like working just with Tegan. Wait, up. no shit. Well, she did she did slip up with Mr. Tardis. Because she, she, did. she talked about what it's like to be on set for modern Doctor Who. Mm. And he That's never funny. picked up on it. That's so <laughs> funny. It was so good. And seeing um, him tweet about it after the fact was common yeah, gold. Hilarious. Um, yeah, Katie Manning, Sophie Aldred ones, they were obviously both incredible because mm. speaking to companions. Douglas McKinnon was a really good one as well. Um director. I'm naming too many here. You only okay. Oh, one. well, I'll cut you off with one final question. One Go question on. that I'm sure as a podcaster, I mean, I get this a lot for community show guests, but who is your dream guest? Who is the one that by any means necessary, you, you, you're you desperate to talk to on the podcast? Oh. You can't just say any of the doctors. If you say a doctor, that's, you have to pick one. Yeah, that's what <laughs> I was going to say. I'm going to discount doctors. Okay, um, good, good, I'd good. Love, I'd love a modern companion. Mm. I've always thought Freema Adjaman would be really fun yeah. to have on. Um, in terms of like 
uh, Russell or Steve That's Moffat a good choice. or yeah. Chris Chibnall. I, I would love to speak to Chris Chibnall. Mm. I have so many questions. <laughs> if anything, like because Russell and Stephen are so open, there's like less that I could ask them. Oh, that's true. Really yeah, Chibnall's always been but so secretive. I think, yeah, Chibnall's been really secretive. Um, I feel like there's so many stories behind that era. And like he's now started to do a few interviews and they've all been really interesting. So yeah. I think Chris Chibnall is genuinely high up on that list. No, good um, choice, my friend. Good and choice. And Jodie. I, I just think Jodie would be a hoot. But obviously she's a doctor, so... <laughs> so, yeah, you've discounted her. You've said I've discounted no. her. Um, yeah, that is the end of my questions for you um thank you very much for coming on it's about damn time that you uh, came on the community it show is. proper it's been an absolute pleasure it's been oh, a that's hoot. all i can ask for so uh i'm going to make the robot lady say <laughs> <laughs>